Okay, let's talk to the community. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jodri from uh, the French community uh, Archangel Cluster and uh, first thank you for having invited us today. This is just amazing uh, like last time. And so my first question is about uh, what has changed between the two games come, uh, what are the main changes you could have brought into the game and the one you still hope to make uh, until the release in October. Yeah, one of the main changes between the two Gamescom is the fact that last year we were in the, in the business area, uh, behind closed doors, only showing the game to the press and to you, the VIP fans, obviously. And it was just a vertical slice of the game. It was representative of most of the gameplay features, but it was really just a small part. Uh, we had obviously no online, nothing related to the conflux. We had no dynasty traits or weapons to show. Uh, we had no reputation system at that time. Uh, we had uh, only a single faction on a single map, a couple of creatures, not even a boss. We were just teasing about the, vo the boss fights. Uh, so it was. Uh, this is how Hero 6 will look like in terms of visuals. Uh, we, we displayed the, the area of control system. We displayed the... Uh, we have, of course showed that we had less resources and that the management of resources and, uh, and uh, creatures were streamlined. Uh, we showed the new interface. There were a couple of things like that, but it was really. Uh, this is your first glimpse of Hero 6, so you see where we're going, but we haven't revealed everything yet. Whereas this year at Gamescom, we show and talk about everything. The game is almost final, and we're not on the business area anymore. We're on the public booth. We do a show, uh, a show twice per day to explain to people who don't know about Mad Magic Heroes what this game is all about, why it's sexy and addictive. Uh, and we let them play hands-on the game, so they really can have a, a full experience. That uh, in the demo they play uh, Sandor and the Orcs, the stronghold faction against the Abyssal Worm, one of the bosses of the game, and they can explore a bit the adventure map and do a couple of classic uh, hero things. Uh, so it's uh, for us, it's really a different kind of perception. It's not the press anymore; it's the, the fans and the people who are, may not be fans but are interested by this kind of game. Um, and, uh, and we're on stage, so it's a bit more uh, exhilarating at the same time to be here uh, this year. And uh, I'm Okwer from the official Ubisoft boards, and uh, thank you for giving us a chance with this Q&A. And I have a question from the Heroes community, which is as follows. Uh, what kind of official support do you have planned for modding and modding support in general for the game? Um, the Mad Magic community has been especially strong in, and active in modding and creating maps and creating uh, mobs, even whole campaign. Uh, like for instance, uh, Mazin Julian Pio, that's also why we hired him. Uh, but we uh, really want to support that uh, by giving them a first a solid map editor. And uh, I can tell you from uh, Julian's perspective, and, and most of you, the VIP fan, had a chance to have a look at it when we were doing the, the press tour at Budapest. Uh, it's more powerful, more flexible than the former map editors, so you will be able to do a lot of cool things with it. For now, it's not ready. We, we really wish to release it as soon as possible, if, even if possible before the release of the game. Uh, I'm not so sure what will happen, but we'll try to do it. But uh, we just need to tweak uh, accessibility, so make the buttons clear and obvious, uh, make sure that all the texts are good, solid English, so they're easy to understand. So it's minor tweaks, but we still need to do that. Uh, I think Julien himself will be involved in uh, writing a manual that will explain everything and how to use it with shortcuts and etc. So I think when it is released people will really say, oh this is like a marvelous uh, map editor tool uh, and they will certainly use it a lot and to help them um, communicate about the creations we will use the conflux, part of the conflux. As you know, um, this online layer we had on top of Hero 6 uh, let you put widgets into the main menu in the game, and some of the widgets in the future we want them to uh, we want uh, you to be able to customize them. 
So they are related to your own community sites and to your own creations. So you can have widgets, for instance, that instead of linking yourself to the official Ubisoft forums, they will be linked to Archangel Castle or to uh, Celestial Heavens, whatever. And some of them will be linked to maybe uh, uh, um, a special site that will be dedicated to showing the latest map creations, campaign creations, mods, etc., and let you rank them and let you uh, uh, share them, basically. That's really what we want to do. What Ubisoft is doing today with Uplay, that is a whole system of uh, bridging all the games together and connecting the community with the developers and the publishers, we want to do it with the Conflux and with the dynasty system that we have in Hero 6. Thank you. There's also going to be a, a random map generator? Uh, we want to do it, but as we're still finishing the, the map editor for now, and I think it's more crucial, uh, sure. random map generator will help people create map for sure, uh, but it will be a second part in the, the, the support of the game, so don't expect it for release, uh, and we'll be able to discuss it again once the game is uh, out in the nature and once you really uh, start to play with it. Snork from uh, the community, uh, and I would like to ask you a question about the DRM. Do you have to be online to play Heroes of Might Magic 6? So not at all. Uh, now we can communicate freely about it. Uh, at first it was uh, kind of tricky because there were so many games with so many uh, kind of online protection at Ubisoft that uh, uh, we had to, to wait until the conflicts was officially announced to be able to say it. But now we can. Uh, you don't need to be online to play Hero 6. You can really play it in a plane, in a train, at your grandmother's house on top of a mountain with no internet connection at all. You will be able to play the old way, uh, meaning uh, you do maps, you do the campaign, you finish the campaign, you restart from scratch another campaign, you can do a uh, hot seat, etc. Uh, the advantage of being connected and having, of course, a legitimate Ubisoft account is that you benefit from both the Conflux and the Dynasty systems. Dynasty systems give some persistency to your experience, meaning if you play one campaign, uh, you gain uh, what we call dynasty traits, dynasty weapons, so gameplay benefits that you will be able to transfer to your other heroes for multiplayer maps or for another campaign. Uh, and the conflicts keeps you connected to the community, to, to the official uh, Ubisoft news and forums and whatnot, uh, but to your friends with uh, the chat system, the integrated Skype, and uh, lately with the widgets that will allow you to be connected to your forums. So it's added services and benefits for people who are connected and of course who bought the game, so who are faithful and loyal fans. Uh, but uh, if for one reason or another you lose your connection or you cannot connect because you're at a certain place, then you can still keep playing. Uh, the main difference will be that you will have to differentiate between your online saves of the game and your offline saves of the game. There will be two different tracks. Um, well, I'm Oli Brandt from the uh, UB community and uh, I've been in contact with quite a few fans and boards and the discussions have been largely about the resource system, the new. Will it remain just with one particular new resource or will it be, a, be an expanded community later on? Uh, so we plan to stick to the four resources we have now. Uh, there were uh, several reasons uh, for us to reduce the number of rare resources from uh, four to one. Uh, so we don't plan to expand it. Um, uh, that said, obviously, uh, you as VIP fans had a chance to try it out a bit before the others, and I think it takes time for everyone to get used to the system and to understand what it brings uh, as an added strategic value to the game. So we'll let people try out the game for a couple of months before they really have a final position on is it better or is it worse than before in terms of strategic perception. Uh, so maybe also for balance purposes as well? The, the, um, the, the, yeah. the reducing the number. Actually. Reducing, yeah. for, for us it helps us uh, create more important strategic locations of the invention map, balance the factions, it becomes easier. Create maps, uh, multiplayer maps, single player maps is also easier, so for, for the developers but also for the modders. Uh, and uh, really uh, we see a lot of benefits with this new system. Uh, we focus more on strategy, less on economy, uh, so you have less uh, conversion to do between resources you don't need and convert them into resources you need. So we feel there are a lot of uh, benefits, but again, uh, 
there, there are already other might magic games out there like kingdoms who have a stronger economy part and obviously uh, if we were for instance to change the, the resource system in a kingdoms 2 game uh, we wouldn't cut down the resources on the contrary we would expand them uh, one of the interesting possibilities of the dragon blood resource uh, is that they're linked to the to the dragon gods so in Hero 6, we have only one type of crystal, and it's a generic dragon crystal. But if we do a game like Kingdoms or more a game more based on economy, we can have a fire dragon blood crystal, water dragon blood crystal, air dragon blood crystal, earth dragon blood crystal, light, darkness, etc., chaos, order. We can have 10 or 12 resources if we want in a game that makes sense within our world and that are just um, variations on the system we currently have. Another question from Akasha Kasper community. Uh, it is about um, the turn screen. Um, with the betas, I have not found I've noticed that uh, most of the turns, uh, skill, uh, the turn building tree are similar, and they don't like it because they want specific stuff for each faction. So, yeah. well, why why do you, did you make this uh, this choice? Uh, it was a very early choice in the development of the game, and it was based on the fact that I realized that um, town screens, I mean, town, town trees, development trees, uh, in uh, the former Heroes games had, were based on prerequisites that we felt were not really logical. Uh, so we had to learn them by heart. Uh, it was part of the, you know, this game is tough, this game, this game is hard, you have to, to really master it uh, to, to be able to enjoy it. And this was not a philosophy for Hero 6. Instead, we go for uh, we went for rationalization and for um, um, giving access to more people to the game, which does not mean it's, it becomes boring and simple because mastering it is still very very difficult, very hard, takes time, uh, is challenging and exciting. But um, the we looked at all the towns and we said basically all the towns in Heroes have a lot of things in common: uh, fortifications, uh, developments from village to capital. Uh, creature dwellings, marketplace, uh, hall of heroes or taverns before that. They're the same buildings basically, so why should they come at different stages or require different buildings in all the different faction towns? It does not really make sense. So instead we said we will have a general plan of development that includes all those common buildings and we will try to customize the faction towns by uh, giving them unique buildings that are really specific to those factions. And um, so this will make them more unique, not in the tech tree, but in uh, the gameplay function of the town, the way, the kind of bonuses it gives to the player. Uh, so that's where we put our efforts. That said, we realized that maybe it would be a bit boring to have all the uh, similar plans for all the towns, so we tweaked it a little bit, maybe not enough, uh, by uh, saying, you know, uh, for instance, necromancers get a special uh, Hall of Heroes um, uh, advance or upgrade that no other faction has. Uh, we discussed on one stage the possibility for Stronghold to be able to hire elite creatures before uh, the other faction. So we're still uh, saying that each faction should have, uh, even in the general plan, a specific benefit that will uh, make it a bit more personalized. And another question from the official Ubisoft board, and uh, this is about art design. Uh, are there any plans to maybe change the models of the light and water elementals because they are basically the same model like uh, Blazing Gore and Glories and uh, Spring Spirits? Uh, has there been some sort of laziness <laughs> amongst the developers uh, because uh, uh, of this similarity? Well, um, we, we don't call that laziness, we, we call that um, being smart and uh, doing the best with what we have, uh, which is basically when we, we Creating a, a, a creature uh, for a given faction today, or creating a whole faction for a game uh, that's supposed to ship in 2011, uh, is obviously, and I hope all the community is aware of that, more costly than doing it for Hero 3. Um, the, the graphic part of the game is roughly 45% of the budget of the game, so it's, it's a lot. Uh, we want to make it nice and up to date with the current standards. We're not the best graphic game, you know, the, the, the most beautiful game out there, but we certainly uh, align ourselves with the current standards. And so uh, when we uh, well, looked upon the number of creatures we could do with our, within our budget and with uh, 
and the, the minimum number we should do to satisfy the fans, uh, we decided that five factions were better than six, mm -hmm. and uh, for 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 this reason, but also for strategic reasons again to to really balance them better, but also to have less creatures to produce. And uh, when we counted the number of neutral creatures we would have, we said maybe it's not enough. So. Instead of saying, you know, each creature has to be unique and we'll have less of them, we said, uh, like in many RPGs out there or MMOs, uh, we'll have a blue goblin and a green goblin and a red goblin and a goblin with a hat and they're just the same model but with different <laughs> gameplay abilities. <laughs> so it's not that. If you look at the game, most of the creatures are still unique yeah, and, and it's rare experience. nowadays. But uh, we said, yeah, we will reuse some of the creatures from the lineup to add more neutral creatures. Instead of saying uh, we will take the neutral creatures, put them in the faction, so it's cheaper and lazy. <laughs> it's more of uh, le let's give more content into the game by reusing stuff, just giving them new abilities, which make them tactically different, so interesting to face as enemies or to summon as creatures, because they are different from the regular faction uh, uh, creatures. Thank you. Now, what we have new in the game is uh, the, the reputation system, and like now in the beta, it doesn't feel like it's really doing much. You don't really feel a lot of impact of, of your decisions, and I, I think maybe that has to do with uh, with that you don't progress very fast in one or the other direction. Mm. Is it going to stay like this, or do you plan to do anything about it? I think reputation will be felt. Uh, the, the impact of reputation will be felt uh, more in the final game than in the beta for two reasons. Uh, first, um, the fact that you have to play a campaign from map 1 to map 4 uh, to understand the implications of your reputation choices. So it means four different maps and you build up the reputation um, on, over the course of the campaign and not just in a single map. Um, so, so what about single player maps if you play uh, and an SP map? Exactly, and that's the second uh, fix which is to say if you play just a skirmish map or a multiplayer map, we have to speed up the reputation system a lot and that's wha what we're working on. We, we did that already for the experience. Uh, it still needs to be tweaked in terms of curve, but the, 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 uh, sorry, the pace has been fa fastened, hastened, and we'll do that for reputation as well uh, to, to make it faster. So you, you get a chance, even in a medium-sized map, to change your reputation, to, to really uh, get the benefits from your advanced class. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, this is a question from Celestial Heavens. Um, are the devs uh, aware of the current AI issues and are they prior prioritizing on fixing those? Uh, exactly. Uh, that, that I can tell you that fixing the AI, uh, debugging it, because it's mostly a question of debugging it right now, uh, is one of the main reasons why we postponed the game once again from September to October. Okay. So we, we are aware of that. <laughs> uh, another question from the Ubisoft community. Um, we already brushed the subject. Uh, the patching, how long will the game be supported? I mean, it's a very relevant Thing that in these days, I mean. uh, it's interesting you, you speak about patching and uh, game support because um, here at the Gamescom we opened the Gamescom Ubisoft by roundtable about our uh, vision of online gaming and how it has changed the, the industry and the way we do games. So I was part of the people uh, invited at the roundtable to express uh, our views on the topic. And uh, the, the common message was to say uh, online means constant connection with your uh, audience, with your fans. And for us, it meant from day one we wanted to be connected with you. That's why we created the VIP fan forum, but uh, also uh, the playtest. I invited you to certain events, etc. Beta is part of that, um, and of course, it means also that constant connection does not end when the game ships. Uh, even though Hero Six is still a, a boxed game that you will find in retail or that you can download digitally, uh, there will be support after release that will be really more than what was uh, the case in the past, just a couple of patches to fix the, the things that don't work. Uh, support today means uh, we plan for even a year or two after the game and we don't even talk about DLC right on, it's just supporting the game, uh, adding new features, especially the online features of the Conflux, uh, multiplayer features, uh, that they're all part of this support plan. 
uh, and it's not only fixing things, it's improving and adding uh, new contents to the, to the, um, the original experience. So uh, yeah, the game will be uh, heavily supported, uh, more so than uh, any other uh, uh, magic games done in the past. And that's also game balance wise, I presume. Yeah, exactly, because uh, we will be connected. You know, you will, you will have, uh, you will be able to express yourself directly with the developers and the communities, not only just on your community forums that maybe we don't read. You know, yeah. it's it's different now. There will be a constant connection, uh, and we will be able to measure if the game is balanced and pleasing, etc. Yeah, uh, even that, that means you'll actually play the game among us as well. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the community um, and, and fans, uh, we've also received some questions from our fans on Twitter and Facebook. So, especially we've got a question from uh, Sandro One Million, maybe <laughs> <laughs> a Russian fan. Uh, question Is Ashan and so called All Universe part of a comprehensive whole? Oh, okay. Um, the, well, not exactly. Uh, Ashen is really n does not belong to the, um, the the three D annual computing universe of the Kriegans and the Ancients, uh, so it's disconnected from that. It's really uh, a fantasy world that stands on its own with its own cosmogony that explains how it was created, its own gods to rule it, its own people living on it and uh, having created their own history. Uh, but uh, because we respect the work that was done by 3D Annual Computing and uh, because we have, um, as a member of our team, uh, Julien Pirou Martin, who is like uh, one of the masters of the lore of the Enchant Universe, uh, there will be, there has been already a couple of um, uh, parallels between the two worlds. Uh, it's as if uh, people, famous characters or famous places or events from the, the, f the, the old universe uh, get a second chance uh, in Ashen. So already there were uh, mention of a uh, necromancer lord named Sandro in Heroes 5. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and in the, the name of your fans, uh, of our fans, so it's cool. Uh, and there will be more things like that, especially in uh, Hero 6, I think, uh, I think we've uh, communicated already on a couple of uh, uh, fan favorite characters coming back, but with their own Ashen uh, existence. Uh, not as, you know, they suddenly entered into a portal that led them into a world. It's more like they, they were born in Ashen, but they share a lot of similarities with uh, what they used to be before that. Thanks. So we've got also uh, lots of questions uh, on Facebook. Um, we'll pick one from uh, Florian Graf. Uh, will the difficulty level be dumbed down for noobs? Or will the veterans have fun with challenging maps too? Now, difficulty levels is also one of the things uh, that is currently being addressed uh, with the, 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 um, the final uh, sprint for the game. Uh, the idea is really to have a, a level of difficulty that really is simple enough for you to enjoy the game as I explore a huge world, I, I do quests, I level up my hero, I live a great story, uh, I build up huge armies to conquer cities, I've got a little bit of challenges here and there, the boss fights, the, the final heroes on the map, but more or less, you know, I, I live my story. It takes me time to do that, I enjoy it, uh, it's relaxing and it's a good story and it's a good game and in the end I'm happy. Uh, for those of you who prefer to play uh, heroes like a strategy RPG game, they will play normal and they will have a, a mix of challenge but not too, too harsh on them. And the final level of difficulty should really address those fans that have been playing heroes for ages and that who really want to, to, uh, to, 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 to maybe uh, you know, replay the map several times until they really get it and they really uh, are able to, to, to fulfill their objectives. So that's our objective. That's why we try to measure. Of course, it's always it takes time, obviously. But uh, we don't want a hard difficulty. That's really, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, like a walk in the park uh, for uh, for uh, even even the average you know, players. So hard should mean hard. hard should be because we we're not talking of a you know hell difficulty or how you know uh, uh, agony difficulty. No, no. Hard should be hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for that one.